Hey guys, Joey or Truth Your Day, welcome to another video. Today, guys, we'll be doing a $1,000 PC build. So, without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Okay, guys, starting off with the power supply. For the power supply, I'm with the Rosewell 80 Plus Bronze Certified 550 Watt Power Supply coming in at $54.99 on Amazon. Now this is a pretty great power supply, I decided to go with something a little different. Rosewell has some great power supplies and this one is a pretty good deal. Okay guys, moving on to the hard drive. For the hard drive, it went to Seagate Barracuda 1TB. Now this is a really average hard drive coming in at $49.99. If you want to, you can go with the Western Digital guys. This is I mean, Seagate, uh, they have a great hard drive, Western Digital has great hard drives. It's really honestly just up to you in terms of which spinning hard drive you want to get. Now for this build, I didn't go with an SSD, which might many people might think is weird because in a $1,000 build you can typically slip in an SSD, but I'm going to be completely honest guys, I have an SSD in my build and my build is a little bit more than a grand. Uh, well, actually, probably at this point, it's probably not worth a grand anymore, but, uh, <laughs> when I got it, it was close to a grand, so, basically, I mean, I don't use it, I don't use SSD, I really, I boot windows off my hard drive, uh, off my spinning mechanical hard drive, which I know is kind of stupid, I should probably change that up, honestly, because it's just sitting there storing files, but, uh, I don't see the point of an SSD, at least in a desktop, in a laptop, I see the size-wise, and spinning hard drives, and a device that's being moved around and might be dropped or something like that. This is simply a bad idea. But in a heart in a desktop, it's reasonably stable. And well, of course, I don't know. They're expensive. That's all I have to say. They're really expensive, and I have a lot of stuff to put on them. So I prefer mass storage. Okay, moving on to the memory. For the memory, I want the Ballistic Sports LG 8 gigabytes, one single stick. This is DDR4, and it runs at 2400 megahertz. Not really anything crazy to say about it. It comes in at $59, and it's by Crucial. So, yeah, guys, I mean, this is some pretty great RAM. I. It's RAM, guys. There's nothing really crazy about it. It's got a nice gray heatsink on top of it, which really will look nice in a case that we're about to go over. But uh, overall, good RAM. Nothing else really to say about it, but definitely good RAM. DDR4, high quality. Crucial makes great RAM. So, yeah, great memory right there. Okay, moving on to the case. For the case, when I went with the Zailman ATX Mid Tower case which is the Z3 Plus model, and this is a pretty sleek black case. It's got a nice side panel, plenty of airflow, and it comes in at $45.48. Overall, a great deal when it comes to cases. You can go for anything. This is a little less flashy in terms of cases. It's definitely not as flashy as, say, the Speco one, but it'll get the job done, and it looks nice. Uh, if you want something spec uh, flashy, then go ahead, go get the Speco one, or something even more flashy, but this is definitely a case, if you want to keep it a little bit under the radar, you want it to look at least slightly like a normal computer, and not like a, a gaming machine, because I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of gaming themes, with all the LEDs and all the lights, and uh, yeah, so anyway, moving on to the next component, which is the motherboard. For the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte GA-Z170 HD3. It's a pretty average motherboard supporting two-way crossfire and, of course, DDR4 memory. It's featuring the LGA1151 socket, which gives you a little hint at what CPU we might be going with. Uh, overall, no crazy features. It sports four sticks of DDR4 memory, and it has six SATA 6 gigabit connections. Nothing really completely crazy going on here. It's a pretty average motherboard, but it'll definitely get the job done, and it comes in at $127. Okay guys, moving on to some of the more interesting parts of the build, I'm going to go ahead and go over the CPU. So for the CPU, I went with the Intel Core i5-7600K, and this is an overclockable CPU, it's a 7 generation i5, and comes in at $239.99. Overall, nothing crazy is going on here. On board, it's got Intel HD graphics, 630. And it has a clock speed of 
4.2 gigahertz obviously it's on the LG A1151 socket and it was just released guys so I mean honestly this is a great CB to go with it's got four physical cores eight threads overall a great CPU for the money and definitely something to take a look at for only $239.99 definitely a step of a step of definitely a step up on the last generation anyway guys let's move on to the cooling system for this build we'll be cooling this with air cooling which I know it's not the best and if you can afford to go with something water cooled then I definitely recommend it for this CPU you can definitely get the CPU up to 4.5 gigahertz if you are really determined to do so but we'll be going with the cooler master hyper d92 now this is a rather expensive air cooling solution uh, and it's got a push-pull fan mechanism it's using a 92 millimeter fan it's definitely a great cooling system but of course water cooling is always gonna be better now this cooling system comes in at thirty nine dollars and forty six cents okay guys moving on to the last component and what you're really here for and that is the video card for the video card I want the Zodiac GeForce GTX 1070 Mini. This is an 8 gigabyte uh, card. It's got GDDR5 GDDR5 memory, and this is a rather small GTX 1070, which is great. Comes in at $379.99. Now we're gonna quickly go over the the actual video, uh, the actual game performance you can get out of this in a second. But overall. I like going with cards that are more compact. This is definitely a card that you'll be able to fit into any size case. If you really want to try to fit into a smaller case, then this card will work for you, especially compared to a lot of the other uh, GTX 1070s. This is overall a really good card. Okay, guys, moving on to the game performance. So starting off with our first game, Crisis 3, at high settings and at 1920 by 1080 we received a average frame rate of 160 and a low of 107. Now, keep in mind that the card that we're using is the second card on this list. It's the Zodiac GTX 1070 AMP amp uh, at 8 gigabytes of memory not the overclocked version of this card so yes but you're only losing a couple frames in fact the low uh, for the one percent low is actually one, uh, one frame higher but uh overall great performance more than playable obviously and definitely over anything that you'd be expecting uh so yeah but with this card you're probably not going to be playing games at 1920 by 10 you're probably going to be playing them at 1440 so moving on to crisis 3 at 1440 and I just want to point this out that uh, these spec these uh these mo these numbers might not be 100% accurate this is the exact same card however we're not using the same P CPU as this uh, as these scores would uh, say so this we're using a i5 so they are probably using a i7 to clock these scores so therefore these scores might be a little bit higher than what you might actually get but definitely very close. Our CPU should not be a bottleneck in this situation. Okay, moving on to Crisis 3 at 1440p. So at 1440p high settings, you received an average frame rate of 103 and a minimum of 69. So definitely more than playable, over 60 frames per second. Amazing. And when it comes to getting high frame rates at 1440p, anything above 60, in my opinion, is amazing in terms of performance because, for the most part, most people are not going to be spending the money on a on a 100 hertz or even or maybe even a 14 144 hertz 1440p monitor. So you definitely don't need to worry about that for the most part, at least, because you're going to be spending more on the monitor than you will be on the actual video card. Okay, moving on to the next test, the next game, which is Grand Theft Auto 5. So for Grand Theft Auto 5, at very high settings, with advanced settings off, and the MSAA off, uh, we received a average frame rate of 145 at uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution. So definitely more than playable. I mean, guys, obviously these are all going to be playable at 1080p. This is definitely a card that you can max out at 1080p easily and be playing on a 144 hertz monitor. Okay, moving on to GTA 5 at 1440p. So at 1440p, we received an average frame rate of 114 frames and a minimum of 73 frames. 
So definitely still there, guys. Still over 60 frames per second. You're kicking ass, especially in 1440p gaming. Okay, moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, with high settings, we received a average frame rate of 132 frames per second and a minimum of 92 frames per second at 1920 by 1080p resolution. Definitely more than playable. Uh, you're not quite hitting that 144 hertz that you might want to get if you have a 144 hertz monitor. So you might want to. Uh, there's not really much you can do about that, honestly. But if you plan on trying to play this at 144 hertz, I don't really understand why, because this is a more cinematic game, and it's definitely more about the mechanics rather than about response time, and you'll be easily able to hit uh, 144 frames per second with something like CSGO or any first person shooter with small maps that you really want to hit that high frame rate and that can really make a difference in terms of uh, performance. Okay, moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1440p. At 1440p, we received a average frame rate of 90 frames per second and a minimum 63. It's uh, still over that 60 mark, which I'm actually slightly surprised about because I was not expecting the Rise of the Tomb Raider to play over 60 frames per second. I was expecting it to probably dip into the high 50s to low 50s, but uh, it, it stayed strong now, didn't it? Okay, moving on to the next game and final game, which of course is The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. Now this at high settings, hair works off, which is a huge, huge frame killer in terms of performance. I don't understand why, because it doesn't really add that much to the game, but it definitely kills performance. Uh, at 1920 by 1080p, we received an average frame rate of 120 frames per second and a minimum of 75. This frame rate is amazing, and all these games are very... Uh, GPU intensive in terms of uh, performing and are very cinematic and none of them really require this much power in terms of pushing up a tons and tons of frames so you can see that uh, definitely a great performer okay moving on to our final benchmark which is The Witcher 3 at 1440p so with The Witcher 3 at 1440p we found that this card reaches a average frame rate of 80 frames per second and a minimum of 47 so yet yeah, we're a little bit below that 60 frames per second margin that you'd like but of course the average is still over 60 by far so you shouldn't see those dips very often except for in very very uh, crazy scenes and circumstances where there's a lot of characters moving on screen and a lot of explosions uh, anyway guys thank you for watching I'd like to say the final price of this build comes to $995.99 all components and prices were all from Amazon so uh, you could possibly find these pl on other places cheaper especially Micro Center. Micro Center might be selling this GTX 1070 for much cheaper if you can find it near you. Okay guys thank you for watching don't forget to leave a like if you guys like the video and if you guys want to see more content from me then don't forget to leave a subscribe subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the notification button if you guys want to see more of me anyway guys uh, I'd like to ask if you guys would like me to do a monitor review I'm getting I ordered a monitor off of eBay uh, actually just a couple minutes ago for 185 bucks it's used it's the LG 29 um 67 P ultra wide monitor it's an older monitor, it's a couple years old, and it is definitely not brand new. But if you guys like me to do a review, I will do a review. Just leave a comment down below if you'd like to see that. Anyway, guys, it could also be just a video and overall buying monitors off of eBay because I did buy this used off eBay uh, from someone who has a name that isn't exactly what uh, would uh, think of as a reputable source, but it was a great deal, so I had to jump at it. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.